Session 7.2, Measuring the Quality of a Survey. These sessions, we're going to talk about the accuracy and the precision, and also we'll be introduced what is the sampling distribution and also the formula for the standard error. Evaluating surveys. Statisticians will evaluate the method used for the survey, not the outcome of the single survey. Look at this example. If a group of research were to survey a thousand randomly select people, we would expect the results to vary from sample to sample because we would want to know how the group did as a whole. We evaluate the estimation method, not the individual estimate. Um, this is talking about like uh, when we survey a thousand randomly select people, some people will ask, hey, this thousand people, it may not be represent the population. So it cannot be using the sample to estimate the population. Uh, but actually, uh, we always evaluate the estimation method, not talking about only that survey of the outcome. The goal, accuracy and the precision. An estimation method should be both accurate and precise. Do you guys know what is the accurate, what is the precise? Accurate, the method measures what it intended, correctly estimate the population parameter. Precise, if the method is repeated, the estimate are very consistent. So you may want to look at this example. You're gonna see for the first one here, um, this is the example of accurate and precise because like they all of them is going to be hitting the bull's eyes. Second one, you can see all the arrow going on to this point, right? So we're going to say this is not accurate because it didn't hit like the bull's eye in here. But actually the method is really precise because they all of them is going to be going on one point here. Number three, this is really accurate because this is kind of like close to the bull's eyes, but this is not precise. The last one, this is not accurate and this is not precise. It's far away from the bull's eyes and you can see um, four of them, they do have the precisions in here. So not accurate and not precise. Okay, accuracy and the precision. Think about it for this one. Do you think it's going to be accurate or precise or both? This one we could see is both accuracy and the precision, right? They kind of hit the target. It's going to be all the balls is really close to each other. Second one. This picture shows the precision because they kind of close to each other here but not accuracy because the target should be here. Number three, the picture shows accuracy, but not the precision. Okay, stimulation. Stimulation is a way to model random events such that stimulate outcomes closely match real world outcomes. By observing stimulation outcomes, research gain insights on the real world. What's the stimulation means? We try to uh, perform the experiment. We try to draw the sample from the populations and we want to calculate it. And then we all, and then we're gonna observe the outcomes. And then you will have the idea what is the population is. Let's try to do this experiment. We have a small population of eight people. So this is gonna be my population. Our population is pretty small. And then two of them are cat people and six of them are dog people. Random samples of four are taken from this population and the percentage of cat people are noted for each sample. So we try to pick four people from this population. And when you pick these four people, that will be your sample. Okay, first, from this population, what is the percentage of cat people? We have two cat people out of eight people. So that will be two over eight. 
So we do have 25% of the population are cat people. How about the dog people? What's the percentage of the dog people? We have six dog people out of eight of them. So that will be 75% of population are dog people. So the parameter is talking about the population proportion. And this is represent the population proportion of the cat people are 25%. Okay, now we want to draw four people from the population has my sample. What do you guys expect to happen? Is it possible to get a sample with zero cat people? Is it possible? Yes, right? I could pick these four people. So that's a no cat people here. So the sample proportion will be zero, right? And will each sample contain 25% people? It really depends, depends on how you pick, right? If I pick here, I pick this part, one cat and then three dog people, I do have a 25% cat people, right? But if I pick this four, so that will be 0% of the cat people, okay? So one more time, we do have the small population of eight people, and we already calculate the population proportion for the cat people will be 25%. Population proportion of the dog people will be 75%. Now, we want to perform an experiment. We try to randomly pick four people from the population. And then, we're going to calculate the sample proportion. So, uh, using a random number table, we pick three random samples. And the results are below. So first, we're gonna close my eyes and then we're gonna pick the four people from the eight people. We're gonna pick four dog people here. And then we try to calculate the percentage of cat people. That's called sample proportion, right? So we do have a zero over four. So that's a zero percent cat people. And then I will use the random table again. At this time, I'm gonna pick three dog people and one cat people. Now, we're going to calculate the sample proportion of the cat people. So that will be 1 out of 4, which is going to be 25% cat people. Okay, one more time. We're going to randomly pick 4 people. This time, I do have a 1 cat people, and then we do have a 3 dog people. So same idea, I got the 25% the cat people. Okay, now, I'm going to write it out in the table. So the first time... The population parameter. This is talking about here. Okay, this is the population parameter, right? The proportion. We do have a 25% of the cat people. So first one, the P population proportion equal to 25% cat people. And for the first time, when we pick the sample proportion will be equal to 0% cat people, right? This is how we get from here. Okay, one more time. I need you guys to remember the notation. The P represents the population proportion. P hat, that will be the sample proportion, okay? Second time, our population parameter doesn't change, right? We still have a 25% cat people. And from our sample, we do have a 25% cat people as well. Number three, same thing, P to 25%. And then the third time, when we randomly pick the people, we have sample proportion equal to 25% cat people. So we know that the sample proportion change from sample to sample. It really depends how you pick, right? I can pick two cat people and two dog people. Then my sample proportion will become 50% cat people, okay? So this is what they say. The sample proportion change from sample to sample but the population samples remain the same. It won't change, right? Because this is the population. Okay, this stimulation is a random experiment and P hat is our outcome. Because it is random, P hat has probability distribution. The probability distribution of P hat has a small name, sampling distribution. 
And the p hat is a statistic we use to estimate the population parameter. So remember, this is the statistic. Statistic is talking about the sample. So in this example, we have the sample proportion. And this is to estimate the population parameter. Okay, so we're going to say it out. Like, um, if we only draw four people from the populations and we write it down all the outcome, we do have a 0%, 25%, or 50% of the cat people. And they calculate the probability. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how they get this result here. Okay, here, we do have this population. We have eight people from total. And then we randomly pick four people from the population. Okay, the population, we only have a small population. It's people here. So uh, if we list all the possible outcome, we can have a lot of different combination here. But actually, we could calculate how many total possible outcome will we get. We do have uh, eight people here. And then we're going to draw four people from here. And then the order doesn't really matter. So we'll be using um, the NCR, okay? This part, I just show it to you guys. How can I calculate it? I'm not asking you guys to understand how we get this formula, okay? And uh, you could think about it. This is just like we have eight people, and then we're going to randomly pick four people from here. So I want to see how many total outcomes that we have. So you could use your calculator or you could use the formula here. That would be equal to 70 for total. Okay, so that means like if we have eight people and if we randomly pick four people from here, we do have a 70 combination to getting all this. And our example here, we only pick three of them. And then we will find out the sample proportion. But actually, if we try to write it all out, we should have a 17 combination. Okay. For example, the first one, uh, we could get it like we only we can get like zero percent of the cat people. So I may pick these four. Okay, these four here. So D D D D. So we calculate it, you know, you only have a 0% of the cat people, okay? And the second one, I'm going to pick this four here. So same thing, D, 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 D. I also get 0%. And this time, I may be four people. Also 0% of the cat people. And then if you keep going on it to find the different combination and not pinging the C here, actually you will find it out. They do have a 15 outcomes. That is 0% of the cat people. Okay. And then second one, I will pay four people from these eight people. And this time, I will have a one cat people and then three dog people. So I may pick, let's say first one, this one, second one, I may pick this cat and this three dog people, this cat and then this three dog people. So I will have the combination like this. And when you calculate it, so you do have a 25% of cat people. And then second time, I may do this one. Okay, keep going. You do have a different combination because you have a two cat here. Okay, once you write out all the possible outcome, you're gonna get forty outcomes here. Okay, last one. We can have uh, pick these two cat people to pick these two dog people. So we can have a C C D D C D C D C D D C or maybe D, C, C, D. Keep going on it. And then we quite it out. You're going to get 50% cat people in this way. And actually, we do have a 15 outcomes from here. Okay.
So when you calculate the total, 15 plus 15, 30, 30 plus 40, you should have a 17 outcomes. Okay, I don't need you guys to know um, how many outcomes you're going to get for each of them. I will just show you guys how they get on this probability distribution. Okay, so now we do have a 70. So you could do the math in here. I'm going to use black here. So I do have a 15 outcomes. They are 0% out of 70. So if I'm finding the probability, we could do 15 over 70. Use the calculator. You're gonna get 0.21429. Okay, this one, same idea. I do have a 40 outcomes out of 70 for total. I gotta calculate probability that we do have a 25% of the cat people. Use the calculator, you're gonna get 0.57143. Same idea for this one 15 outcomes out of 70. So we do have a 0.21429. We do have this probability to see 50% of the cat people. Okay, so one more time, I just show you guys, explain it, how they get this probability. It's just like um, they performed the experiment, they whited out all the possible outcomes. And this possible outcomes it will be including 0%, 25%, or 50%. And then once they list it all out, they just calculate how many 0% of the cat people out of the total, that will be the probability. So when they combine it together, we call this is going to be the probability distribution of sample proportion. Okay, one more time. This is called probability distribution of sample proportion. Okay, sample proportion. And then they can represent it using the table or a graph. So from the graph here, the sample proportion equal to 0% will be 0.21429. And here, sample proportion to have 25% of the cat people, you can have a 0.57143 here. Last one, that will be the same probability to get like the 0% here. Okay. Okay, our estimator, the P hat is not always the same as our parameter P, right? The sample proportion is not always as same as the parameter. One more time, the parameter here, population parameter, the population proportion, we know we do have a 25% of the cat people. And then we perform the experiment we can have a chance that the sample proportion is a 0%. This is not equal to the population proportion. We will have a, some chance that they are not equal to the population proportion. And the mean of the sampling distribution is 25%. The same has the value of P. This indicates that, that the estimator P hat is unbiased. So you could try to calculate it. We can have this free percentage, 0%, 25%, or 50%. So when you add it up together, that will be 75% and divided by 3, which is going to be 25%. So this is the mean of the sampling distribution. One more time. Sampling distribution, talking about this guy. How can we find the mean? Add it all up, and then we do have a three of them. So add it all up, divided by three. You will find the mean of the sampling distribution will be 25%, which is going to be this guy here. And remember the 25%, this is exactly the population proportion. At the beginning, we do have eight people in our population. And the population proportion of the cat people is 25%. After we perform this probability distribution, we find it out the mean of the sampling distribution is also 25%. So that's why we say the estimator P hat is unbiased. Okay, this is a good estimator. 
we could use the mean of the sample length distribution to estimate the population proportion because this is unbiased, okay? Even though the sample proportion is not always equal to population proportion, the estimate is never more than 25% points away from the P. So you can see the differences, okay? Even though you get the 0%, they are not more than 25% away from the P, okay? Away from the P in here. So keep in mind, sample proportion is unbiased. This is a good estimator. Okay, standard error. Standard error is the standard division of sample length distribution. Okay, we may have a standard error just like this guy. You could call this as a standard error because the population proportion is 25%. But sample proportion here is only 0%. So we do have the standard error here. It measures how much an estimator typically varies from sample to sample. When the standard error is small, we say the estimator is precise. Okay, we talk about what is a precise, right? So let's see here. This time, we'll be using a larger population. Okay, exactly the same experiment. The first experiment, we have the population only eight people. Now, we change it. This time, we consider our population will be 1,000 people. 250 are kept people. So we do have a 25% of the populations. Okay, same thing, population proportion equal to 25%. And then this time, we randomly pick the sample size of 10, okay? Before, we only pick 4. This time, we're going to pick size of 10. And find the sample proportion of cat people in each sample. So this is the stimulation 2. Similar experiment, we just increase the population size, increase the sample size. Take a random sample with dull replacement of 10 people. Means like from these 1,000 people, we're going to pick 10 people. Without replacement, you don't put it back, okay? Pick one people, throw it away. Pick second people, throw it away until you take 10 people. Use the same idea to calculate the sample proportion of the cat people in our sample, okay? So let's say uh, we're going to write it out, how many cat people, how many dog people, and then we calculate the sample proportion. Number three, repeat step one and step two a total of 10,000 times. 10,000 times. Each time, you're going to calculate the p-head and record its value. Similar to the idea that we did it on the paper. We will keep draw the sample of 10 people and calculate the sample proportion. Okay, and then we're going to write it out all the outcomes. So this is going to be our prediction. We predict that sample proportion will not be the same every time because it is based on a random sample. So the value of the sample proportion will vary randomly. And we predict that the mean outcome, typically the sample proportion, will be 0.25, okay? We assume it's going to be equal to 0.25 because our population is 25% also. And we know that from the stimulation one, the estimator is unbiased, okay? Precision. Do you think the result will be more precise or less precise than in last stimulations? So we increase the population size, we increase the sample size. We want to see it will be more precise or less precise than last time. Okay, look at it. We're gonna using the technology, there's no way you could write out all the outcomes. And then we're going to use the computer to calculate it. You can see we do have a different percentage in here. And then we perform it to the histogram in here. We have a 0%. The probability to get 0% of the cat people is about 500 something in here. Remember the center of the distribution? We learned it from the chapter 2. How you find the center of the distribution? It's going to be about like somewhere like here. And this is going to be the 25% again. 
the standard error turns out to be about 13.56%. Uh, later on, I'm going to teach you guys how to calculate the standard error. So variation of sample proportion is less. This estimator is more precise, even though the population is larger. In general, the precision has nothing to do with the size of the population, but only with the size of the sample. This is talking about if we increase the sample size, the estimator is more precise. Okay, so we want to get larger sample size and make it more precise. Okay, stimulation free. This time, uh, we still have the same population of 1000 people. From this stimulation, we know that um, you won't be get more precise even though the population is larger. And that's why we're going to keep 1000 people here. Same idea, 25% of the population are kept people. Okay, but we'll be increasing the sample size from 10 to 100. We want to see, we, we would get the better standard error and then will the estimator more precise okay we're gonna pick 100 instead of 10 okay we use the technology to form the histogram in here okay so you could see the center of the distribution still equal to 25 percent so this is good And then the shape of the histograms looks more symmetric, right? Compared with the last one here. Okay, this is kind of a skew to the right, right? Kind of. But this time when we're increasing the sample size, this is more symmetric. And when we calculate the standard error, it turns out to be 4.2%, right? Better than last time because we're increasing the sample size from 10 to 100. So estimator is more precise because it used a larger sample size. And the standard error is smaller than for sample size of 10. Okay, so this is really good to increase the sample size. We will have a more symmetric histogram and we do have a less standard error. Okay, this is going to be the summary. We do have this free stimulation here. So the first dimension, we have a population size 8. We only draw the sample size 4. The sampling distribution of the mean will be 25%. Standard error is going to be 16.4%. When we're increasing the population size and the sample size to the 10, we still get 25% of the mean for the sampling distribution. And the standard error becomes 13.5. If we keep increasing the sample size, from 10 to 100, the sampling distribution of the mean is still 25%, but the standard error becomes 4.2% in here. So we know that the estimated sample proportion is unbiased. I want you guys to highlight this one for all sample size. Okay, even you take 4, 10, or 100, this guy is still unbiased. We still get 25% of the distribution here, sampling distribution. Second, precision improve has the sample size gets larger. You can see, right? Compare the number here. The shape of the sampling distribution is more symmetric for larger sample size. So increasing sample size improves precision. Okay, now we're going to talk about the formula for the standard error. Okay, the bias of sample proportion is zero and the standard error of sample proportion is the SE here, this is talking about the standard error. Okay, using this formula based on first, sample is randomly select from the population of inches. Second, if the sampling is without replacement, population must be at least 10 times larger than the sample size. Okay, so look at here. This is the 10 times of the population size. 10 times of the population size. So it fulfilled the first and the second requirement. Now, let's try to use this formula to calculate the standard error. 
Okay, we have uh, P, the population proportion times 1 minus population proportion divided by the sample size. Let's try to do the second one. Okay, we know the population proportion is 25%. So 0.25 times frequency 1 minus 0.25. Okay, and then divided by sample size will be 10. And then we're going to take the square root. So you can see, I calculated 13.69%. So this is about the same, 13.5 standard error. Second one, do the same thing. This guy is 25%, so 0 0.25 times 0 0.75. Divided by sample size become 100. Take the square root. So times 100%, you're going to get 4.3 feet. This is about like 4.2% for the standard error. Okay, you can't do it for the first one. Because for the first one, it didn't fulfill the requirement of population must be at least 10 times larger than the sample size. Okay, this is not the first one. Okay, so they may use another way to find the standard error here. Okay, that's it.